what's the one overarching thing you've learned in all of your years of Civil War study? Um, definitely uh, that we are just like the people that lived back then. We can find connections with all of the people in this nation, whether their families were here before the Civil War or not, and how the Civil War impacts us uh, right up until the present day. The watershed moment that defined everything thereafter. Um, I, I've read where the Transcontinental Railroad probably would not have been possible before the war. It was, it was too overwhelming. But the war taught the American people to think big. I'm not sure that it really needed to happen. I look at the forces that happen and I look at Fort Sumter over and over again and I look at the, the egos, the, e the, the egos of, of Lincoln and Davis. It never really needed to happen, but it's unfortunate that it did. That we probably can't underestimate the importance of emancipation uh, as, a, as a crucial outcome of the Civil War. That in 1861, few Americans would have anticipated uh, the end of an institution that was deeply ingrained in American society. They were extremely uh, knowledgeable about what was going on. And keep in mind, they didn't have the communications, the, the instant communications that we have today. Yet they knew what was going on. They could size up people, who was good and who was bad, and who was a person capable of being followed or not. The more I read, the more I learn. You understand that it's about personalities. People shape events, and people's relationships shapes, shape events. You know, if there's no Grant Sherman friendship, there is no victory at Vicksburg or the Atlanta campaign. Basically, the whole last half of the war hangs on that, on that relationship. They're people just like we are. You know, Robert E. Lee still has to write home for his underwear, and, and May is getting hot. And it, you know, gives you an insight. He's not—he's not the statue out there in, on Monument Avenue. He's—he's he's a man like like all of us.